Just last year, Hanna-Barbera's seminal classic cartoon Scooby-Doo, Where Are You?, celebrated a monumental milestone. The show, which was a staple of every child's Saturday morning routine, first burst onto the scene a half century ago on September 13, 1969. Fred, Daphne, Velma, Shaggy, and our good friend Scooby have been cracking cases and revealing the shrouded faces of villainous scum for quite some time now. Although the modern incarnations have seen a waft of different voice actors playing their respective roles, we'll always remember the original voice cast that gave life to the show, stole our hearts, and brought us along on spooky, mysterious adventures. Make sure you stick around until the end of the video to learn more about the iconic voice behind the one and only Scooby-Doo. Facts First presents the TV actors behind the original Scooby-Doo voices. If you remember seeing this show when it first came out, show us by clicking the like button. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell. Shaggy, Casey Kasem. You may not realize it, but this slacker, food-obsessed best friend of Scooby's full name is Norville Shaggy Rogers. Bet you never knew that. When he wasn't eating pizzas and hanging out in the mystery machine, he was helping the gang find clues on whatever villain's trail they were following that week. He could be a bit of an airhead at times, and the parts of the puzzle he solved were typically a result of sheer luck more than they were a result of actual detective work, but we loved him anyway. He provided comedic relief when it was needed the most. Shaggy was voice acted by Casey Kasem. You may recognize his familiar voice from American Top 40, a radio show that counted down the Top 40 pop songs from the charts with the help of Casey's warm, personable narration to guide us through the list. He would work on the radio primarily doing countdown shows for nearly 40 years. His career wasn't merely from the airwaves. Rather, he was a veteran voice actor that was no stranger to the Hanna-Barbera universe. He had worked on shows such as Super Friends, playing the voice of Robin the Boy Wonder, and Josie and the Pussycats as Alexander Cabot III. If you watched TV in the 70s, you probably also saw him making guest appearances in live-action series like Quincy M.E. and Charlie's Angels. Casey would continue to play the role of Shaggy in many spin-offs of the original show throughout his life, right up until his death in 2014. Oh, by the way, if you haven't clicked the like button yet, make sure you give it a click for Shaggy and the talented Casey Kasem. Velma, Nicole Jaffe, everybody's favorite nerdy, bespectacled investigator, was often the one to unravel the clues and crack the case first. She was voice acted by none other than Nicole Jaffe. Jaffe got her start in showbiz working on an Elvis Presley film called The Trouble with Girls, co-starring with Frank Welker, who we'll meet in just a minute. She may have gotten her start on the big screen, but her career was destined to be in TV. She gained the attention of Hanna-Barbera during a 1969 stage performance of the character Patty on You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. She had impeccable timing and stage presence and stole the show. Gordon Hunt, one of the producers of Scooby-Doo, saw Jaffe and knew she had to be in the upcoming show, which was still in pre production. He offered her the job as Velma and the rest was history. She would reprise the role of Velma many times over the years to fans' overwhelming approval. Some say she's still looking for her glasses to this day. Fred, Frank Welker. Remember Velma's co-star in that Elvis flick, Frank Welker? Well, he would be the lucky one to play Fred, the preppy affluent leader of the gang who was always off on another mission to take down a bad guy. Frank has one of the most impressive resumes in the world of voice acting. Not only did he play the voice of Fred, but in later installments of the franchise, he would play the voice voice of Scooby-Doo himself. He'd reprise his role of Fred in 2019's CGI feature film, Scoob. He's been the iconic voice of beloved characters on literally hundreds of cartoons and shows, including Curious George as the title role, Garfield the Cat as, well, Garfield, Futurama as Nibbler, and Megatron on the Transformers series. Despite being best known for his voice work, he was also no stranger to the world of TV, working on shows like The Don Knot Show and The Partridge Family. Daphne, Stefaniana Christofferson. She's an orange-haired bombshell known for her fashion sense and her tendency to get into trouble, earning her the less-than-becoming nickname Danger Prone Daphne. Daphne. She wasn't exactly the humblest one of the bunch, and she was guilty of being a little bit vain and self-absorbed. But she also had a certain likability to her, something that would draw the romantic interests of Fred in later episodes. Stefaniana, who also went by the stage name Indira Danks, got her start on the Andy Griffith Show spin-off Mayberry RFD, before landing her role as the money-hungry supermodel in Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? She wouldn't spend much time on the series, however. She was replaced by Heather North in Season 2, thus freeing up her plate to take on other 
other roles on hit TV shows like Sanford and Son and MASH. Our opinion is she made a poor move leaving Scooby-Doo because her career would never quite see another role as iconic, but regardless, she found her way by tapping into her other talents. Stefaniana had quite the knack of writing catchy musical tunes. She would gain notable attention for her work composing TV show theme songs for shows like Star Crystal and the jingle to 1986's AT&T commercial Reach Out and Touch Someone. Daphne, Heather North. When Stefaniana left after season one to move to New York City with her husband, it left producers scrambling to find a suitable replacement for her part. It was in this desperate search that they would find the perfect fit to fill the bill. North had a few credits under her belt before being signed on with Hanna-Barbera. She had appeared in 1965's Git, a heartwarming old Yeller-esque film about a girl and her dog. She also had established a recurring part on the show Paradise Bay as the character Kitty Morgan. Throughout her life, she would remain close friends with Nicole Jaffe, the voice of Velma. And although she would go on to guest star in numerous TV shows like Green Acres, The Fugitive, and The Monkees, she would always be best known for her role as Daphne, a part she would return to for dozens of the show's incarnations up until 2003's Scooby-Doo and the Monster of Mexico. Christofferson may have been the first voice of Daphne, but North is the one that was most iconic and memorable. Numerous bad guys. Hal Smith. Remember the town drunk in good old Mayberry? Hal Smith rose to stardom by playing the perpetually intoxicated Otis Campbell. His memorable character may have had a drinking problem, but he was exceedingly respectful, even to the point of routinely arresting himself and sobering up in the town's jail cells under the watchful eye of Andy Griffith and Don Knotts. In reality, Hal Smith was stone cold sober. He didn't have time to hit the bottle because he was one of the hardest working individuals in TV at the time, appearing in over 300 credit roles throughout his impressive career. He started out voice acting as the sagely voice of Owl in Winnie the Pooh, but would soon move on to do bigger and better things, showing up as different character voices for shows like DuckTales, Clutch Cargo, Gumby, and Hong Kong Fooey. When he signed with the production team of Scooby-Doo Where Are You, he hit the voice acting lottery. He had the privilege of playing every supplemental character in every episode, mostly the bad guys. One of our favorites was the villainous spooky space kook in the episode Go Away Ghost Ship, but we would never reveal to you the mystery of who was behind his mask. Scooby-Doo, Don Messick. What, you thought we were gonna forget about our old friend Scooby-Doo? Here's a fun piece of trivia. Scooby's full name was actually scoobert doo The cowardly canine that lent his namesake to the show was played by none other than the legend of the animated world, Don Messick. Messick grew up in Baltimore, Maryland, where he would land his first gig on the airwaves at the age of 15. A radio producer gave him his own show playing all the characters and sound effects. He hit the road to try to pitch his one-man show concept to larger audiences. Messick was a hobbyist ventriloquist and had already accumulated a tremendous amount of skill at this tender young age. He could throw his voice and had developed dozens of character voices he would later perfect. His first two big television breaks were on the show's Raggedy Ann, where he played Raggedy Andy, and MGM's Tex Avery, where he played the nasally dog Droopy. When Hanna-Barbera formed in 1957, he became a go-to choice for supporting roles like Boo Boo Bear in the Yogi Bear series and Dr. Benton Quest on Johnny Quest. But in 1969, he would finally take the lead role he was always looking for. For. Scooby-Doo would be the most defining part of his otherwise fantastically diverse career, one in which he would play over 400 roles. Don Messick was a legend. He had the most diverse range of voices in the industry. From Papa Smurf to Hampton, from Tiny Toon Adventures, he never did the same voice twice. Chances are you've probably heard his voice your entire life and not even realized it. Messick would play every incarnation of Scooby-Doo until his retirement in 1996. Towards the end of his life, though, he would have to stop doing the voice he was famous for. He cited quitting smoking as preventing him from being able to put enough rasp in his voice to pull the voice off anymore. Well, that wraps up our inside look at the cast of the original Scooby-Doo. Although the franchise is still going strong 50 years later, we'll always remember the original voices fondly. Now we'd like to hear from you. Which Scooby-Doo character was your favorite? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to Factsverse to see more videos like this.